Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. My name is Brendan Watson and it's a, a pleasure to welcome you to this, which is not really our traditional way of sharing information. Usually we would be on site with a, a twilight open evening, but because of the COVID-19 restrictions and safety, we're now presenting uh, <coughs> webinars for all families so that you can get some information about different subject areas. And tonight, of course, is about the vocational education and training VET certificates that we offer, as well as the other senior secondary certificate. There's two in Victoria, the VCAL, the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. And so it's my pleasure to welcome you all tonight and to uh, recognise and pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land on which the school is sited, the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation. Uh, we commit ourselves to reconciliation and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And uh, we, we hope that in our lifetime, we will see um, true reconciliation in our country. Um, tonight, there's a, a number of staff have joined us. We want to be able to answer your questions, but it's traditional that um, when we gather, we also uh, pray. So I'm going to ask our MC tonight, James Mason, to lead us in prayer and then to um, kick off our proceedings with introductions of the panel. Thank you, James. Thanks, Brennan. Uh, as you're probably aware, today is the, uh, I think it's the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. So I ask us to pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Gracious God, spirit of life and love, help us to see our scars, those we have created, those we are called to witness, and those we can soothe and heal. We are deeply grateful for the buds and blossoms that even the most scarred offer as a revelation to the world. And especially on this 75th anniversary of Hiroshima Day, we renew our commitment to peace individually, collectively and globally. To peace within, which calms our anxieties and fears. To peace between, which overcomes differences, animosities and conflict. And to the great peace, peace beyond even our understanding that is your gift and which we attempt to be stewards of the world, of, for the world. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, as Brendan said, welcome to the V. Callan Vocational Training Session. Um, we have a number of people with us tonight. Uh, we have Brendan, who you've, who you've already heard from. Um, my name is Jamie Mason. I'm Assistant Principal Learning and Teaching here at CRC Sydenham. Um, I think we have Joseph Shaw. I know we certainly have Sue Edwards, who uh, is Cluster Coordinator of um, the VCAL MacKillop House or Cluster. Um, so we'll get, we're going to hear from uh, Sue and Joseph in a moment and we'll have an opportunity to ask questions around VCAL. And you'll notice an icon somewhere in front of you that has a Q&A. We'd, we'd certainly appreciate as much uh, as many questions as possible. That certainly makes our job a lot easier. Uh, and then after that, we'll move into vocational training vet with uh, Janine Thomas, who is a VCAL, uh, vet coordinator. And again, uh, we'll be asking for questions and hoping to answer as many questions as you have. And then I'll talk a little bit about uh, where we go from here in terms of uh, making decisions around subjects. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Sue or Joseph, I think. I Hi, Jamie. Oh, you are here, Joseph. Thank you. Yep. Great. So, um... uh, yeah, I'll um, quickly introduce myself. My name's uh, Joe Shaw. I'm the VCAL Learning Area Coordinator. Um, Sue Edwards is also here and she's the MacKillop Cluster Coordinator. So um, basically our roles are, um, I look after curriculum. Um, so looking at uh, learning and teaching in the VCAL area. Um, Sue as MacKillop Cluster Coordinator looks, uh, looks after the pastoral care um, and she gets to know all of the students and families pretty well um, over the two years that they're at the college. Uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about VCAL, um, what VCAL is. So it's a senior secondary school qualification which uh, focuses on a hands-on approach to learning. Uh, it's the Certificate of Applied Learning. Um, it's a qualification that provides students with the skills, knowledge and attributes to enable students to make informed choices about the pathways that they want to take in their life. 
Uh, it develops employability skills and participation in family and community contexts and lifelong learning. Um, so where people go with VCAL, or I suppose I'll, I'll, um, a lot of people will be wondering if VCAL is the right program for them um, and what the typical VCAL student is. Uh, we're really lucky at CRC Sydenham that um, the VCAL program is really well resourced and really well supported with the school and we've got one of the um, larger VCAL cohorts um, of schools. Um, the typical, uh, I suppose, VCAL student or, or people think that the typical VCAL student uh, is someone who's interested in doing a trade, which is 100% correct um, in terms of if, if you're doing a trade, it's a really good uh, way for you to stay in school, um, get your year 12 certificate, but also you start your, uh, your workplace learning, you start your TAFE, um, and so you get a bit of a head start with that. Uh, but it's also for a variety of different learners, people who um, want a less uh, fixed learning style. Um, we like really motivated learners, people who are curious and, and want it. And I suppose VCAL gives people the opportunity to pursue things that they're curious about. Um, so you can see here with this flow chart, uh, sorry, Jamie, if you just go back one, um, with the flow chart here, um, the VCAL certificate um, can lead directly to employment. Um, it can also go into further study um, with an apprenticeship or traineeship. Um, some people leave the school and go into um, TAFE where they can do certificates or diplomas. Uh, and we've had students who go from VCAL and, and do end up in university. It's not the typical um, pathway, but uh, that is something that um, that is possible um, if you do complete um, some certificates and further study after school. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so what is applied learning? Uh, participating in hands-on or practical learning experiences. So um, when I mentioned before that VCAL is really well resourced and supported at the school, um, we've got a number of, uh, number of projects that the students run. Um, this year, we've obviously had some unique challenges, which has, um, has uh, meant that some of these projects have been disrupted. But um, you can see in this picture here, we've got some students building a greenhouse. Um, this was, uh, we had a conversation with one of the gardeners who, um, and, and said, look, we want to we wanna do something, what's going on? And he said, oh, well, we, we're, um, we need a greenhouse. Um, and so the students led this, um, they planned it, they drew up a design for it, they looked at what materials were needed, um, did a budget um, and presented that to the school um, and then it, then it got improved, uh, approved. Um, and uh, then there was the actual task of, of building the greenhouse. Um, with this, they were able to work on their communication um, and meet some literacy outcomes. They were able to meet some numeracy outcomes by looking at budgeting, uh, and they were able to, to work on a project and, and work together as a team. Um, and so that's what we, when, when we talk about hands-on or applied learning, that's what we, we're referring to. Um, and what we're hoping to achieve with, with these projects are authentic um, workplace learning, authentic tasks that um, they can use those skills when they go into the workplace in future. Um, it's a way for them to connect with each other and the community um, with real life experiences. Um, and it's student centred, um, acknowledging their interests and working to develop skills and knowledge. So this particular class, um, a lot of the students were, were really practical and doing trade pathways. And so they were interested in getting outside and building. Um, other classes might be, uh, have more of a focus on hospitality and so they might do projects around cooking. Um, or planning community events. There's lots of um, applied learning in different projects that are that are well supported at CRC Sydenham. Um, so the structure of VCAL at CRC Sydenham. Um, so we offer foundation, intermediate, and senior VCAL certificates. Um, Caroline Springs offers foundation VCAL at Year Ten, and so. 
uh, if you're coming from Caroline Springs, you might have already received your foundation certificate and go straight into intermediate. Uh, if you're coming from one of the other feeder schools, then that's not, um, you won't be disadvantaged. Would you mind just going back one slide, Jamie? Um, so you won't be disadvantaged um, if you're coming from one of the other feeder schools, you can start in foundation um, and you can move up. If, if you're working well, you can move up to intermediate um, during the year um, and look at doing senior in year 12. Um, there are also students who complete foundation across year, years 11 and 12. Um, and so that's for people who need a bit more flexibility in their learning program um, to still get that year 12 qualification, um, but with uh, tasks that are often modified. Um, the differences between the levels are, as it progresses from foundation, it's very much um, teacher instruction, um, students doing it intermediate, they're showing a bit more independence. And by the time they get to senior, we want the students to be running their own projects um, and really showing a lot of independence, coming up with ideas, um, working with their peers to get those up and running. Um, so that's what we, we aim to get the students to that senior level so they can be really independent and motivated learners. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so how VCAL looks, there's uh, four core subjects um, that they do at school. And so uh, students are at school uh, at least three days a week doing these core VCAL subjects. They're literacy and numeracy, which are pretty self-explanatory. Um, literacy, a lot of people assume that it, it's gonna be English, but it can be really uh, specific and relevant to the, to the pathway that the students are pursuing. Uh, for example, there, there might be, um, there, there's, a read, there's a, an outcome for literacy, which is reading for practical purposes. So the way they can meet that outcome could be following a recipe or it could be following instructions for, for building something or following um, a floor plan or following directions. So um, there's a, a variety of ways for students to meet these outcomes, which best suits their, their style of learning. Um, numeracy, again, um, are very, uh, is very um, specific to, to the field that they're working in. Uh, if you look at personal development skills, um, that's focusing on uh, working as a team, um, looking at the community uh, and, and running projects within the community. Work-related skills is uh, getting them ready for the workplace, uh, um, getting them to understand occupational health and safety, um, getting them to understand their wages and entitlements um, and, and other things that are um, that they'll need to know in the workplace. Uh, industry specific skills is uh, um, the structured workplace learning or work placement, um, which the students do um, generally starting second half of year 11 or year 12, they'll do a work placement one day a week. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, so structured workplace learning. Um, once the students have completed the first unit of uh, work-related skills, they are able to do structured workplace learning one day a week. Uh, they go to work for a day at the times indicated by the workplace that they're in. Uh, ideally, it's done in the industry that matches their vet or the pathway that they want to do when they leave school. Uh, the students are paid um, a minimum of $5 a day which just covers the Mikey. Um, the workplaces often pay a little bit more, but it's not a lot. It's more about the learning and the experience that they get. Uh, one of the really valuable things about structured workplace learning is that it often leads to an apprenticeship um, and so building those connections within the community, uh, within the community and with businesses can be really um, valuable. Um, and so uh, work placement needs to be organised. Um, when they come in year 11, uh, unless they've come from Caroline Springs, most students won't have done that work-related skills unit, so they won't start work placement straight away. Um, but they will do it um, as the, either at the, in the second half of year 11 or definitely in year 12, they'll be doing work placement one day a week. Thanks, Jamie. 
Um, so the skill, what, what we want the VCAL learners to get out of the VCAL program are employability skills. Um, so we want our, our students to be problem solvers. They want them, we want them to be able to manage themselves, um, use the technology um, and other ICT that they will need in their career. Uh, they'll need to be able to plan and organise, um, really be self-motivated um, so they can go into a variety of different workplaces and succeed. Um, we want them to be able to work in a team, show initiative and be really good communicators. That's one thing that um, I think it's probably one of the most obvious things that we see the students progress from uh, the start of year 11 to, to the end of year 12. They become much more confident communicators, not just with their peers, but also with the staff and um, and people that they, they're, they're at their work placement with. Uh, so I think we're gonna open up to questions now. So um, I'm happy yeah, to answer any questions and Sue will also be available to answer any questions. Yes, that, that's, uh, if we could uh, perhaps spend a, a 30 seconds or so, uh, perhaps having a bit of a chat while you're home. And if you have questions, I know that we've already got a couple of questions that are, uh, have been quite, Good questions, uh, but I'll just give everyone perhaps 30 seconds to perhaps think about their other questions they may have. Yeah, um, I'm just seeing one here in the chat. Uh, my daughter is choosing VCAL as she learns better hands-on, um, but isn't interested in a trade after school. Would Unscore VCE have been a better choice? Um, uh, I think um, VCAL can um, be a good pathway for for a number of careers. I, I suppose um, we'd need to know more specifically what she's interested in um, in pursuing after school. Um, and, and unscored VCE can also be um, can, can also be beneficial depending on the type of learner. But I, I think if she likes hands-on learning, um, v, I, I'd recommend VCAL because I think um, she'll be engaged in the two years that she's at school. Um, she'll be able to do things that she's interested in doing and she'll get the year 12 certificate. So it'll put her in a, um, in a good position to, to take the next step in, in the part in her pathway. Our vets as well um, don't just uh, cater to students wanting to go into a trade. We have a whole range of vets. There's allied health, uh, which leads into the, uh, the healthcare sector that's run by ACU, Australian Catholic University on site at the college. Uh, we have um, vet business, for instance, um, uh, vet business administration for those who are wanting to work in the admin side of a, maybe an office. Um, the benefit of doing a, a VCAL is that uh, students will not only do a, a one day of uh, their vet course, they will also have the opportunity to do a work placement, which means that they could be working in an industry where um, they might be picking up employment at the end of year 12. Um, many of our students actually get offered um, jobs by their uh, their workplace em employer and um, uh, transition from being a student to a to an employee in in those uh, workplaces. So uh, the the VCE students do not tend to have those um, opportunities because they they've got a timetable which uh, is five days a week. Built into VCAL is the work placement, which is a really important aspect and uh, that structured workplace learning uh, skills young people up to transition into the workforce ahead of others because they've already got the workplace skills, the employability skills that employers are looking for. They already know how to communicate in the workplace. They know how to work in teams. They know how uh, a range of, to do a range of things that uh, perhaps other young people don't because they haven't been in the same environment as a VCAL student has. I think too, um, that was a really good point, Brendan. One of um in terms of some of our students, they actually do go on to do their, after their certificate, their certificate to invest. Um, we have a cluster that go on to do a diploma at um, university. And when they do that diploma, they will get some credits and then some are going into bachelors. It depends on the individual's pathway, but that is an option for many. And we do have, um, I would say at least 10, usually within the year at the end of year 12, that look at that as a pathway. And some courses, Sue, don't actually require an ATAR, but so you can do a, if you get into senior VCAL, 
you can actually um, apply through VTAC to go into a, a, a university degree at, at bachelor level straight if you get the senior VCAL, is that right? Yes, yes, and we've had a couple of those students too. And I can remember um, at the end of year 12, we actually do their application online. We do all their, we assist them with those sort of things and we've got the careers counsellors. But there are many options and pathways if they're looking at tertiary education as well. However, for the two years, they've actually picked a pathway and a learning environment that is um, conducive to their learning, which is great. The structure of our VCAL course also tries to leave more doors open and create opportunities in that students will undertake two VET courses. Um, we offer so many on site and we have uh, about 700 students a week from other schools come on site. They're paying to do those courses. For CRC Sydenham students, you don't pay the three and a half to four thousand dollars that they are paying just to do those courses. Um, you're, you're already a member of our community so you don't pay anything for them. And, and some, some young people have done three or four vets, um, and that's a huge saving per year to families. Uh, it's a, a recognised qualification, not just in Australia, but internationally. Now, we structured the course um, so that there's multiple vet opportunities. Do, does someone want to talk about that, uh, Joe or, or Sue? Joe, do you want to? Yeah, um, so uh, when students start in year 11, um, they do, two days of VET. Um, so if the student has a, has a clear pathway and they know what they want to do, it might be, um, say, plumbing that they do on a Tuesday. On a Wednesday, they'll do a VET at school, which could be something um, that will either support the plumbing, so something practical based um, that could be, uh, we've got um, Design 380 or, um, picture framing or, or something practical, or it could be something that they're interested in like baking or, or hospitality that um, gives them a different learning experience. So initially they'll do that two days a week. Um, there's also VET electives which run on uh, Mondays and Fridays, um, which is another opportunity for students to, to try something maybe outside their, um, their career path, or it could be, again, it could be something that supports their career path. Um, so there's a, um, a lot of variety in terms of um, the vets on offer and I think Janine will speak a bit more to that um, after this Q&A session. Yeah, I'd, I'd just add something as well. Uh, the, there's, a few, there's a question around, you know, thinking of VCAL or unscored VCE. I know David answered that quite well. I'd just point out the fact that there's quite good evidence that students who who track into that uh, VCAL trade uh, TAFE pathway that and they have a good understanding of uh, their, their kind of workplace goals tend to do better than students who drift into VCE uh, unsure about where they're going and perhaps leave school with a, a mediocre ATAR and end up in a in a course that they're perhaps not really that interested in so even though it's it's you know you know it, it can be a difficult decision, I think that if you are thinking about VCAL, uh, that's a good start. And particularly, I think in this environment that we're currently in, that there are going to be there's going to be a lot of money I think thrown at at trades and skill upskilling young people. Uh, so I think strategically, if you're thinking about work in the future, and you have a bent towards applied learning and you like that environment, then I think it's a really uh, wise move at this point in time. Um, I'm just seeing another question here. Um, it's quite a specific one. Um, if you're currently undertaking a VCAL program in, in year 10 at CRC Caroline Springs, will I be in foundation or intermediate VCAL for year 11? Um, assuming that um, you pass all of the, the subjects at year 10, you'll go straight into intermediate when you come to CRC Sydenham in year 11. I can see a couple of VET subjects. So before we, uh, questions I should say, before we get to those questions, I might throw to Janine and I'll get the um, presentation back up in a moment. Janine Thomas is our VET coordinator. So she'll speak to us about VET and then we'll come back to some of those questions around VET, remembering that VET is available both to VCE students and VCAL students. Just bear with me while I share the screen again. Okay, so it's over to you, Janine. Thanks, Jamie. Good evening, everybody. 
Um, my name is Janine Thomas and I'm the uh, VET coordinator here at CRC Sydenham. If we can just pop to the next slide. What is VET? Vocational Education and Training. It enables students to undertake a nationally recognised uh, vocational qualification whilst doing their VCE or VCAL. The programs delivered at CRC include non-scored and scored subjects. Scored subjects meaning that students can choose to have their, v their VET contribute to their ATAR. So let me go to the next slide. So the, some of the non-scored uh, internal VET programs that we offer on site, baking, barbering, beauty services, horticulture, outdoor rec business, which is applied RE, picture framing, signage, and kitchen operations. An added advantage to, um, to students studying these subjects, sorry if you can just go back one, Jamie, um, is that they're all actually enterprises. This means that the students are not getting um, experience in simulated work environments. They're actually getting real, they're working in real businesses. Um, we've got the retail baking store, CRC Bakery and Patisserie. All the breads and cakes that are produced by the students go into the shop. That's open five days a week. Um, similarly, frames at CRC, Sid Signs, the Village Barber, CRC Beauty, Manor and Scapes. Um, the students in uh, cooking in manor while studying kitchen operations. They prepare lunch four days a week for staff and students, a different menu every day with the produce coming from the garden grown by our horticulture students. Um, the last two years, um, that uh, last year, two of our year two students that were doing kitchen operations in manor, both ended the year going straight into apprenticeships in, in that industry. Um, students studying beauty, signage, frames, barbering and kitchen ops in Manor, if you're doing VCAL, have the advantage of doing it for the day also. This means that they get through more units in the year and um, than what you would be if you were studying VCE. We've had some students, for example, in Manor, they, um, as Joe um, mentioned before, the work placement. We have students that um, will study their kitchen operations on a Tuesday and then they'll do their work placement on a Wednesday in Manor, which is, um, which is perfect if that's, if that's the pathway that they want to choose. Then we have the additional programs that, um, that do offer scored assessment for those that want to um, take it up as a VCE subject and add it to their ATAR. Um, one of our enterprises in this is the hospitality slash kitchen operations, our Quatrefoils restaurant. The students, they study the dual subject hospitality and kitchen operations up in the restaurant. And that gives them an opportunity to make a decision which path that they'd wanna pursue in the second year. We then have programs from the um, Brimbank cluster. The Brimbank cluster is made up of government, non-government Catholic schools. They have the opportunity to enrol in one of our um, one of nine VET subjects listed here. Some of these uh, subjects are particularly popular, for example, building construction. Therefore, um, I would recommend that if students are wondering whether to take this up to ask as many questions as possible before subject selection. And they include acting, applied fashion, automotive, building, engineering, Electrotechnology, makeup, plumbing, and selling assistance. Just to add, I think, Janine, that these are only available to VCAL students. Am I yes. right in saying that? Yep. yep. So if you're, if you're thinking about the VC pathway, um, these would not be possible. Um, just some extra points to go through um, for um, when undertaking a VET course. There is an external levy for um, our external programs. They range from $1,200 to $1,900. Um, these fees are payable upon enrolment. I do have to stress though, this does not guarantee um, that your student is enrolled. As I mentioned earlier, some of these trades in particular are very popular. And um, sometimes you may need to go on a waiting list initially. Um, but. I've never had anyone that's actually ended up missing out. Um, so I would recommend that if you're not sure or you've got a student who's not sure, maybe I want to do building, but I'm not sure, I'll, I'll just wait and see. Um, I'd encourage you to enrol if you can. 
Um, and then if you decide after that, that they don't want to, they don't like it or anything like that, you've got the opportunity to withdraw and you, you've got up until about the 28th of February next year um, to get your money back. After that though, um, there's no refunds, unfortunately, and students can't change their vet halfway through the year. It's just um, too difficult, particularly with um, most of the subjects, the first unit you do is OH&S. Um, so it's no good coming in halfway through a year, you've missed three or four units. Um, and, oh, I'm just with um, the external, um, um, just sorry, one more point just to make, just within, um, Enrolments. Every course is actually run through uh, an external training organisation or um, the college registered training organisation. So students are required to fill out an additional enrolment form relevant to the subject they're studying. And part of this, they um, it's a regulatory requirement that they have a USI number. This allows the students in future to look up their results without having to rely on the RTOs to, to find them later down the track. Um, so if the students come home and you say, oh, but you've already enrolled, it, it's, it's actually just one more enrolment form that they do need to do. And that USI is really important that they have. Um, and the only other thing I'll probably mention is majority of the courses uh, run from 150 to 520, with the exception of course of the restaurant, which will obviously go later. Um, and some of the uh, other, uh, courses that can go for all day and that's usually nine to five. Okay again once again uh, thanks for that Janine. Uh, there's some good questions coming at us. Um, again if we just can spend perhaps uh, a couple of maybe 30 seconds or so thinking about any questions that you'd like to throw at the panel. Jamie, there was some um, clarification um, required over external vets. Um, now, uh, Janine, uh, the external vets, which are often at other schools, trade training centres, um, they may they really are mainly focused for those wanting to go into a trade. So um, they're not really open for VCE students. Is that right? Um, that is right. There is the odd exception, um, but that would have to be done during the... the um subject selection interview. And, and the timetable, and James, you can probably answer this one, the timetable is structured in such a way that it's very hard for a VCE student to be going out for a full day of VET because they'd miss other subjects. Um, that's why we look at VCAL. Um, mm. if, if students are looking to do a uh, one of those external VET trade yeah. uh, areas, is that right? Yeah, so we, uh... If a student's going out for the day, it would mean that they would miss a whole day of VCE subjects, which would put them basically they would they could miss a third of their their time in in particular subjects. So uh, certainly, the VCAL timetable is is very much structured around flexibility, allowing students to work three days at school or have three days kind of in the traditional classroom or in classrooms, and then two days out of school. So certainly if you are heading down that pathway, then VCAL would, would be the way to, to go. Yeah, if I could just add those two exceptions are actually um, vets that only run half the day. So the student can, has got time in their VCA mm -hmm. timetable, but again, that still will, they'd still need to look at their other subjects as to whether that would fit in or not. Yeah. The cost of those um, external vets, uh, we subsidise with some funding that we get from the um, Catholic Education Office, um, but it's still about $1,900 to $2,200 upfront that parents um, need to be paying. Uh, we can't give a fee concession on that because we get billed that amount. Uh, the internal vets, and uh, they, they have a levy which is for equipment. So for instance, hospitality, there's a, there's a levy which covers the uniform that students will wear, but you don't actually pay for the tuition and course, uh, the, the qualification itself. Whereas other students coming in from other schools will pay um, a similar amount um, to CRC Sydney for their, their child to be uh, studying with us. Um, as I said before, for, for Sydney students on site vet, 
Um, it doesn't cost you anything as far as fees, but you do pay a levy, a small levy, which covers the equipment you receive. And it is, um, it, it's directly uh, proportionate to levy to the equipment you receive or the materials that you receive. I'll just um, mention too, it's probably timely, is if any of the students have done uh, VCAL foundation at Caroline Springs and then come to us at year 11 and do um, their intermediate or in general, any students at year 10, any of your students that already have started their VET, possibly at the year 10 level, when you're coming to year 11 uh, VCAL, that will be your second year of that VET. So by the end of year 11, you'll already have a VET if you've done year 10 and year 11 VET. And at that point in year 11, you have the option to go out on work placement one day a week because you've already done your WRS if you are a Caroline Springs student. But if you're a general feeder student and you've done your year 10 and year 11 vet, you can pick up a new, another vet on the other day in year 11 and then in year 12 finish that vet. So ideally at the end of year 12 with 10, 11 and 12, you will walk out with two vets, two complete vets. Um, and then obviously you select which pathway and maybe they will be uh, similar and, and sort of support each other, but you do keep your options open. So any of the students at feeder schools that might not have even started VCAL but have started their VET certainly have that opportunity to walk out of year 12 with two complete certificate two VET qualifications, which is a Got great it. opportunity. Thanks. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I've got another question here, which I think I can answer. What, what if it is recommended to do a VCE maths, which is highly recommended with the VCAL subject chosen? Will this work around the VCAL course? We, uh, in the past, depending on numbers who select it, we have offered one unit of general maths in our VCAL numeracy stream. Now that doesn't always run it will depend on the number of students that have, who are going to choose that but typically that would be students who are looking at an electrical perhaps um, trade or uh, certainly if, you're, if you've got interest and strength in maths then we would certainly encourage you to choose uh, general maths as your uh, numeracy subject in VCAL. So do you want to add to that? Yes, look, definitely. Um, general maths is a great opportunity and we offer it at, um, we've offered it for a few years at different times. Definitely, if you're doing an electrical course, we highly recommend the general maths component of the VCAL program. It'll actually assist you because the electrical course is an external course, obviously. However, very, very much geared with a lot of uh, maths and we try to tailor our particular general maths course with the topics to support the um, electrical students. Having said that, if you're doing building and construction, we would encourage you again to do general maths if that's, um, if you feel you're capable, because again, a lot of maths within that particular course. The numeracy that we offer in general to all our VCAL students, obviously um, we, we do cover the, the range of curriculum under the VCAL and we do finance and, and measurement and all those things that will actually assist in any of the trades. However, the option for general maths is very much. And if we have enough students to run one class or two classes, we would certainly look at that and we would meet those needs. But general maths definitely is a great option for some of those um, more intricate trades that need it. Another question here about a student who has started vet dance, uh, was thinking of doing music performance as well as global politics. She was hoping to do vet acting as well. Um, is this not possible now? Now, I guess what we were talking about earlier would say, no, that's not possible. Uh, however, I would encourage you to uh, talk to talk to us uh, individually. I've certainly um, I'm available to, to talk a little bit about uh, the options there. We certainly, we offer theatre studies as a BCE subject. So that might be something you could consider. But as Janine said, uh, we would have to look at when that vet acting course is running. And if we can structure the timetable, uh, your daughter's timetable, so that it works for her uh, without you know, penalising her in terms of missing too much school, then we can certainly sit down and talk about that. So we, we are flexible enough to realise that sometimes we need to work with you to ensure that uh, your daughter's getting the best possible combinations of subjects 
that are available. However, we can't guarantee it until we have a look at the timetable and when vet acting would actually run. I hope that's answered your question. Jamie, there were some questions there about levels. And I wonder maybe Joe or Sue, if you want to talk about the VCAL levels. Yeah, I um I saw that one. So the different someone was asking about uh, what the difference is between foundation, intermediate, and senior. Um, their certificates, um, all of them are senior secondary school certificates. So if um, a student leaves the school with a foundation certificate, they've got a, a senior school certificate. Um, the typical student say arrives and starts a VCAL program in year 11, they'll start in foundation um, and do that throughout year 11. Um, I mentioned before that that's um, very much teacher led um, in the classroom. Um, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're learning. Uh, in year 12, they might do, uh, they'll, they, assuming they pass everything, they'll be promoted to intermediate, um, which is a bit more student led where they need to show a bit more independence in their learning. Uh, probably most of the students finish with an intermediate certificate. Uh, students who uh, are really driven and really motivated um, will often come to us and ask to do senior um, or potentially we'll go to them and say, look, I think um, this is a really good option for you to do. Um, and that's where they will run projects on their own. I know Stu had, uh, Sue had some um, students last year who organised a really wonderful dinner uh, to support um, a homeless shelter. Um, and so that involved um, communicating with a lot of different stakeholders, um, getting um, people in the community to come in for the dinner. Um, we had some really great speakers. Um, and so, so they organised that, that project. And so that was, um, they were senior students and that was them showing that initiative and, and putting all that extra work in. Um, on the, on the other hand, um, it's completely uh, a, a great option for some students to complete foundation over the two years. Um, if they do need extra support um, with, the, um, with the teachers and, and often with the learning support officers, um, foundation can be a really good option for some people to do over year 11 and, and year 12, where the pressure is, is off a little bit to complete all of the outcomes in the year um, and, and still leave with a senior school certificate at the end of year 12. Did you want to add anything to that, Sue? Oh, yeah, just, um, it's it was, yeah, it, you summed it right up, Joe. But I think the other thing to remember is that we can, um, as parents out there, we can tailor VCAL, the program, although the structure is set with the three days at campus and two days off, but we can tailor it to your students' needs. So whether that is over two years or whether that is taking a little bit more time to get the foundation going into the second year and then moving into intermediate, there are a lot of options. So definitely um, it is a program that can meet many, many different needs of our students. And that's where it's, um, I suppose, a great option if, um, if your student is thinking in terms of not needing an ATAR, um, this could be the option for them. But certainly we can tailor programs and we have many that are individualised uh, for, for that student to meet their learning needs. Thanks, Luke. Uh, I'm not sure this one's been answered. I might ask Janine if she can think about this one. Just asking about son who's interested in doing electrical, uh, understands that it'll be another school. Is this applied through CRC or is this applied separately? Now, I'm not sure. I think you probably did talk a bit about that, but can you speak specifically to what that student would need to do? Yep, Please. so all the external programs, they will um, choose it through our subject selection and then they'll come through to me and then I apply on their behalf through the cluster. I enrol on their behalf through the cluster and then with the cluster, they, um, they work out the class lists and exactly um, which campus. It might, be, it might be at Copperfield, it might be at um, VUSC or I think or it might be even at Big Uni. It just it just depends on the numbers and um, who's offering it. I think they're, they're the three that are offering it next year. A couple more questions here. One refers to a student in year 10 who uh, was at Caroline Springs 
someone may be answering that now, but the question I think was, can they continue to do furnishing next year as well as building and start building and construction? Yes, absolutely. So they'll be doing their second year in um, furnishing on a Thursday. So they would have to try and get into building construction on the Wednesday. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking of having a gap year. Will my VCAL certificate last or is it like an ATAR that loses value? Uh, look, certainly the ATAR doesn't lose value. Once you've got your ATAR, it's with you. And you know, if you take a gap year and come back the year after, your ATAR is still there. And, and a similar thing could be said about the VCAL certificate. Once you've got it, it's, it's with you always. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that notion of taking a gap year and coming back and losing any value, providing you've completed either the VCE or the VCAL. Um, it's with you for life, which is uh, a good thing. Can I go into intermediate VCAL in year 11? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's, um, that's something that we um, often identify around the middle of the year. Um, if a student's doing really well in foundation um, and uh, taking off their outcomes and, and wanting to be more involved or take more of a leadership role in projects, um, we have a conversation around the middle of the year where we, where we identify any of those students and they often ask, um, I'd re I really want to do senior next year, so can I do intermediate? And, and that's um, something that we really um, encourage and, and look for the students to do that around halfway through in year 11 which gives them a better run at going into senior the following year. Okay, we're kind of heading towards the, the end of this information session. I might just give you another 30 seconds for any final questions before, uh, here's one. Does VET acting run for half a day? Where is it held? Uh, yes, it does. And it's held at Taylor's Lake Secondary College. And another really good one here, which I am going to have to throw to someone with a little bit more expertise in this area. How do students manage a school-based apprenticeship in their VCAL years? Who wants to take that one? I'm happy well, to start with it. <laughs> you know, you go soon then. Yeah, well, we'll share, David. Um, school-based apprenticeships are set up whereby a student will have an employer that is wanting to take on a school-based apprentice. So whether that is someone that you know in, in, in an organisation or that it is actually um, advertised. And, and sometimes we do have organisations, employers coming to us to say that there's vacancies. The student would then sit down with Josie Albano, who is our careers coordinator or careers counsellor. And um, she would organise a meeting with the employer and set up um, a, a contract, if you like, and um, usually we've used Serena or so in that instance. But really what it means is that the student would come to CRC Sydney for their three days of VCAL. They would have one day with the employer on the job. So whether it's a mechanic or barbering or whatever. And the other day would be where they would do their structured learning, whether that and that would be at an RTO, a registered training organisation. The only difference I suppose is that the RTO or the course is usually selected by the employer. So the employer may have their apprentices at Vic Uni doing um, mechanics, auto mechanics. So that uh, year 10 or year 11 student, sorry, would then go to that Vic Uni. They wouldn't pick their course or their place of, of study. The employer does that. But they've released for one day to study and um, on the job. The great thing about school-based apprenticeships is you start your apprenticeship. You literally are signed up as an apprentice. The only issue to remember is that you, it is linked with school. So you must stay at school in order for that to be viable, a uh, viable pathway and a viable start to the apprenticeship. But certainly it's a great opportunity, but you do need to source the opportunity yourself. And as I said, we sometimes have organisations coming to us. David, do you want to add anything? Yeah. Yes, that, thanks, Sue. The only thing I would add, um, it's just a really good um, way of dividing the, the week up in a way to have one foot at school and one foot in the workplace. Um, we have another session, I think, Jamie, is that next week? And our careers staff uh, will be there. Um, and uh, they might be able to answer any specific questions you might have about specific programs or, or trades or pathways um, because they've got some really... 
um, they, they have a lot of um, knowledge of what's available in terms of the advertised school-based apprenticeships and um, some other perhaps ideas that, that they might be able to throw to you if, um, if you're thinking about that pathway in your field. Well, what's the date? I can't remember the date off the top of my head, Jamie, of the careers Q&A. Well, it's we have the, it's the general session, yeah, David. Yeah, the eighth, uh, the uh, Wednesday uh, next week. I can't remember. I think it's the twelfth of August, Wednesday the twelfth. Jamie, uh, can I just add to that last question? Yep, that um, yep. uh, with uh, apprenticeships and particularly school-based apprenticeships, uh, the college actually runs a number of businesses, and um, we have uh, qualified trade professionals running them. We have, for instance, uh, two qualified bakers, two qualified chefs. Um, we have in the past taken on uh, school-based apprenticeships within our own um, businesses. But that uh, is where young people have come in, started the vet and really shown an aptitude towards it and a willingness to put in the, the extra work and, and really wanting to achieve. Um, uh, that has gone then on to uh, apprenticeships where uh, a student has finished year 12 and then uh, we have employed them as an apprentice and they've finished their apprenticeship with us working full-time at the college uh, with, say, Peter Haver in the bakery or um, with a, a chef or with Rocco in picture framing. Uh, we also can offer that in um, a number of other areas. But we also have links with a lot of employers that will come to us and say, do you have anyone? Um, we're very, very fortunate to have a very good hospitality um, set of kitchens, um, probably better than most schools. And we get a lot of... Um, uh, hospitality industry, big hotels, particularly coming to us and saying, do you have uh, students? Uh, we, we, we know of a, a gentleman at the moment who has run his own business for many years in um, refrigeration and he's looking for apprentices now. Um, so we, we often are the, the go-to school for um, uh, a lot of trade professionals who know uh, that we have a, a big VCAL program and want someone with the right aptitude. So they'll come to us and ask, do you have anyone? And We'll only recommend young people who have shown their aptitude that have put in and really um, have demonstrated their capacity to work with others and, and a real aptitude towards their, their studies as well as their vet. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities there, uh, both within the college and outside the college. And given that we're, we're one of the few schools in the world that runs so many businesses, in fact, 16 on site, we have a, a lot of opportunity for particularly our VCAL students who may wish to undertake a school-based apprenticeship have shown that aptitude and then we'll transition them into a, an apprenticeship either on-site or off-site. A couple more questions. Uh, son is interested in... I'm oh, sorry, son is interested in uh, electrical. I think I just finished that one. Did someone answer that question? It was about uh, someone who wanted to do electrical and VCE, or engineering, sorry, engineering. It was engineering and VCE. Um, as I said earlier, that that's uh, a difficult one to accommodate. It is offered at, VC, at, at um, uh, yeah. CRC Melton though, mm, and yeah. we do have an arrangement um, with, within the family that we can send students up the road to, to Melton. Um, on an afternoon and that Janine would be able to work with students and look at when those programs are offered in our other trade training centre mm. on site at CRC Melton, yeah, um, we, which, we, which we are a partner in. Yeah, we've had a, we, I, I think we've got a student in year 12 at the moment who started uh, last year and is in that pathway. So again, yeah. it's one of those ones where we, we need to sit down with the family individually and try and tailor a timetable that will work for, for that student. Uh, Something over here about vet electives. Uh, there are eight of them available. Uh, student is not interested in any of them. Are there any others she could choose from? Uh, unfortunately, no, you, you will have to choose one of those. Uh, I think Joseph spoke a little bit about the fact that that a vet elective is really a chance to explore something that perhaps uh, you might not think you're interested in, but might end up, you might end up sparking something that you really enjoy. So I think there is a broad enough selection there for most people to uh, choose something that will at least um, provide an experience. Uh, so, you know, there is sport, there is baking, there is design. Uh, there's, I think there's horticulture. There's, there's a range of options there. So I think, or well, certainly that, that is the eight that you would need to choose from.
And the um, the VET electives are two periods a week. So it's um, the uh, Monday afternoon and Friday morning, um, one one period each day. So it's not a huge amount of the time, and there's no expectation that 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 they're going to feed into to the students pathway. Um, as Jamie said, it might just be something that they they want to try or they might they want to be interested in. Um, they do have more flexibility if they wanted to change that. They wanted to try something in year eleven and and do something different in year 12 as well. Uh, I'm doing vet music performance next year. Do I need to get a USI number now, Janine? Um, no, but you can get it any time between now and when you enrol. Um, would be fabulous because then once you've got it, that's it. Um, you don't need to do anything else. All you need um, to sign up, it takes about five, ten minutes. Um, is just a Medicare card. It's worth noting that our, um, uh, our curriculum handbook our, has a lot of information about uh, what we offer for VET and it also has um, information on VCAL. And if after tonight you still have questions, um, at, at the subject selection uh, days for each of the campuses, uh, there will be staff available who can answer your questions. And James, do you want to talk a bit about what happens next with the, uh, the subject selections mm -hmm. and the interview process? Yeah, so if you're at Caroline Springs and St Albans, they will be inviting you your family with uh, a teacher from the school and one of our teachers to a remote meeting. Now, I don't know if they, they have started that process. I know that uh, they will be doing that and we will be joining your son or daughter and one of the teachers from your seven to 10 college to talk about your subject selections. I know that you would be in the process of thinking about that and making some decisions on Thursday the 13th, Caroline Springs. I think it's from 8.30 to, to 8 o'clock. So we will be looking forward to meeting you then and finalising your subjects for next year. A similar thing will happen at St Albans on Friday the 14th. And again, St Albans will be organising those meetings and inviting us to the meeting. Slightly different in North, at North Keelor. North Keelor uh, we will be inviting you. So we'll, we'll be offering you an opportunity to book a time where you'll meet with one of the teachers from, uh, from our school, from, uh, from Sydenham, and we'll sit down and uh, plan your course and enter those subject selections. One of the things that you need to be aware of is that uh, for some subjects, and certainly for all VET subjects, there will be some levies and they, uh, there is a payment that will be required by, I think it's the 26th of August. And Brendan might want to talk a bit more about this in a moment, but I certainly from, uh, I've been at Sydney for quite some time and certainly there are, uh, there's the option to talk to the finance team around the payment of those fees. Brendan, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Money doesn't get you in and money won't get you out um, is, is what uh, Father O'Reilly always used to say. And, and we live by that. Um, if, and particularly we understand in, in, at this time, families are struggling. It, it's really tough for everyone. So if you find that um, it is an issue, please talk to us. Um, when we know, we can support you. And that's what we want to do, walk with you and support you. We don't want students missing out on our internal vets where there's an issue. We, we, we can't do much about the externals because we, we build directly um, by external organisations and, and, and it just has to be paid. But um, keep in mind that uh, school leavers, so once a, a young person finishes year 12, if they choose to do a, a course at TAFE, most of the TAFE courses now are covered by government subsidies for school leavers. So all of a sudden, what you would have been paying um, a large sum of money for while a young person was in school suddenly becomes free when they're no longer at school. So it, it's worth balancing that up and then looking at, well, what could we get for free given that we're at Sydenham and then have something else later. Um, that's just something to factor in. But if you find that um, you're being challenged at the moment, as many families are um, during these times, 
uh, then we want to work with you and walk with you. So just please let us know. You usually either speak to, to me as principal or to the finance manager and it's uh, completely confidential uh, and uh, we'll, we'll work through those issues with you. Thanks, Brennan. So I'm going to call our little session uh, to an end in a moment, but I'd just like to thank everyone for firstly attending. It's really uh, means a lot to us that you're here and listening to us and it shows that you're interested in uh, what the future holds for your son and daughter. I'd like to thank all of the panellists and I'd particularly like to thank Danny Briffer, who's our IT expert, who's joined us just in case things went wrong. So thanks again, Danny. Again, we we'll look forward to seeing you at the subject selection interviews either next week or the week after. And I'll call that a night. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming along. Thank you.